friends, it's Sonia with Junk Monkey Paint Company. Do Not Disturb is on, airplane mode is on, which is good so we get we can catch up for a little bit with no distractions. Happy Monday to you guys here in the US, of course, it's Columbus Day. And back home in Canada, it is Happy Thanksgiving Day. So sending love to everybody no matter where you are. Hopefully you have something. I'm pretty sure you have something to be thankful for. And I just hope your day is awesome. So my day is doing good. Had a terrific weekend and got some mail today, which I'm excited to share with you guys. I told you I was reading um, a book this month. It's called A Bad Day for Sunshine. And also I had a couple more books coming in the mail where they have arrived. Woohoo! They arrived and I want to share those with you. So maybe you're reading um, along with me if you want some good books, especially like when we get to fall. It gets all cozy and you just want to curl up. Like right now, it is overcast out today. You look at the sky, the clouds are weird. It's almost like it's going to rain at any given moment. And these are the days that it feels so good just to sit back with a good book. So, all right, these are the other two books for my October reads that I am working on this month to have read. All right, you ready? Can you handle this one? Oh, I'm so excited to start this one. Hocus Pocus. This is the all new sequel. Who else loves Hocus Pocus? I've already watched it already this month. Loved it. It's still as good as the last, like, you know, 200 times that I've seen it. And so did you guys hear that there is a sequel coming out, um, a yeah, part two? And I've been trying to get some information on like what's the storyline gonna be. I read an article where it said that maybe the uh, Sanderson sisters, you get to meet the good sister that you didn't get to meet up until this point. I've heard a couple different like ideas of what it might be about, but I thought I would read the sequel. And even though movies I know can be different than the actual book, I still thought it would be fun to see what the sequel in the book format contains. And in reading this one, this book is supposed to come out like, you know, and now you're 25 years later, Max and Allison's 17 year old daughter, Poppy, finds herself face to face with the Sanderson sister in all their sinister glory. So it's like the future, right? So I am excited. I got this one on Amazon. And honestly, I think this book was like, I don't know, $6.98, so it wasn't expensive, and I love a good hardcover book as well. Anybody else? So if you want to read this one with me this month, go get it now. All right, and the other one I got off Amazon, these arrived together, is a book called Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe. And has anybody heard of this one before? This one just sounds like a cozy, cozy book read. And... Um, yeah, it's supposed to be about, you know, like some magic, some mystery, some family secrets, undeniable charm. Uh, let's see, family, fate, magical intertwine in this endearing southern tale. So it says long held secrets, homemade pie. Okay, I'm here for all the pie. <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway, it's supposed to be a really good read. And somebody, uh, one of the people who left a review here, they say that this book is as refreshing as a glass of blackberry tea. So I went all about it, right? So I'll let you know how it goes, but this is also the other book. So those in total are my three book reads um, that I'm doing this month. Every day I try to read just a little bit. So who wants to read with me? Speaking of the Sanderson sisters, do you remember on the vlog last year, me and Matt hit up the, what's it called? Spirit of Halloween, the Halloween city. I can't remember what it was. And Matt was here, he'd tell you, because he loved those, loves those places. Right now, Matt is in the other room watching the travel channel, channel with like, some show of the most terrifying places in America. You guys might be watching that as well. Lots of haunted places. So anyway, he loves those uh, Halloween stories that pop up, anybody else this time of the year. And last year we went and we hit the clearance time. Like it was after Halloween. So at that point I got all this beautiful Halloween stuff for like a fraction of the price. I did a whole vlog about it. A vlog in the store shopping, a vlog with my haul, and so now this is like the first, you know, time of the year that I could actually get to display all those things that I got. And one of the things that I am so proud of, and I didn't get to open it last year, this says it was regularly $20. I think I paid $10 for it or $5 for it. It wasn't that much. Most everything was 50 to 75% when you get it off after Halloween. And I have been so good. I have been holding on to this. And then it occurred to me, Sonia, you got this banner like this, what do you call it, wall tapestry, and you did not open it. Well, once this goes on my wall now, listen, it might just be there all year round because I am, I'm all about that, all right? So I love Hocus Pocus. What's your favorite, um, 
October movies this time of the year. You'll have to let me know. All right, let's see how this looks. Let's see how this looks. I'm excited. Oh, it's a big one. Nice. A lot of colors. Can you guys see it? Sanderson Sisters. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Can you see that? It's the one night of the year where the spirits of the dead can return to earth. Oh my gosh. Love their faces on here. Super cute, the colors. So I'm gonna go hang this tonight, front and center, and enjoy it in all its glory. Oh yeah, would you have taken it home as well? I mean, it's just so big. It's ginormous, look. Let me step back here. Look how big this is. Holy smokes. All right, I'm loving that. So I'm gonna go find some thumbtacks and put that up. So it's always a good thing. It's almost like when you remember, like when you go and you put a jacket on from last season and you're like, I got money in the pocket. Like, what is that, right? It's extra see stuff that you find that gives you back to extra joy that you totally forgot, you know, that was there. So I'm going to go hang this. <laughs> I love Hocus Pocus. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. And if you have, just go watch it again. It's just a really good movie. Really good movie. All right. So the other reason I'm really excited today was definitely Mondays. Lots of good, thing happen lots of good things happening today. And that is because our new paints arrived. So I thought we could open them together. You guys have seen me paint with, oh, I had a breath. You guys have seen me paint, these boxes are heavy, with, um, I'm gonna for a little blade, here we go. Um, with the paint color samples. And now the batch is finished. Of course, this is the batch where we get to share it with everybody, with all of you. And it is always fun to, yeah, to open up the batch of the paints. Like I've not seen this before. So me and you are gonna look at this together. We're gonna get first looks here together at this. See how this looks, I'm excited already. Now you're gonna know definitely by even me holding up this box here that the, the style of the box has changed, it's taller. And that is because instead of the all uh, plastic wide mouth chunky cans, there is a paint can shortage, right? I did a live, explained all this to you. Holy smokes, literally a paint can shortage, like across the country, insanity. So to fulfill our paints going forward until our regular paint cans, which, you know, even in announcing this, like in showing you guys the new style that these paint cans are gonna be in for the time being, some of you guys wrote in and you said, I actually love this style better. Like I love the metal paint cans. They're lined inside, they're really nice paint cans. We, when we first started doing our paints, did a hybrid can. It was a plastic and metal, like a hybrid can. And so it was the same size as these. The difference is this is all metal. We eventually, and before that we did mason jars. Do you remember that? We tried plastic, oh my gosh. All the things that you go right you uh yeah progress over perfection and you grow as you go but we ended up moving from the hybrid from the metal plastic ones um that was this shape this size the 16 ounce pint cans into oh, low power mode i better better talk quick into um the chunky cans that i call it right the uh the round what do you call it just um wider wider mouth ones and so everybody i noticed that you know what, what's your favorite style can to paint from everybody as a painter we're all so different right some of you guys are like i love these cans better so anyhow these are the cans we're using for the time being until we can get our regular ones back and i'm excited we told you guys that we were gonna do some really cool fall edition spooky um fun labels just for this fall for this batch and so this is the tintable glaze glaze is what you put over your dried paint i get this question all the time glaze is what you put over your dried paint to basically stain it into whatever color you want it to be so it doesn't cancel out your paint and this is not paint so it's not going to completely cover it but what it's going to do is put a sheen over it over it i always say it's like looking at something painted when you put glaze over the top of it through sunglasses, right? You can still see the color, but if you put a pair of black glaze, AKA black sunglasses on, it's gonna look, uh, shade it darker, right? Dramatic. And then of course, brown will give you more rustic and cozy and definitely, 
yeah, well lived and been around the block. And with the tintable glaze, we also have a white one, but you guys were like, I want to get all creative. So you guys had a great idea. You were like, you know, can we like mix different, the glazes together to get different colors? And we're like, you know what? Let's do a tintable glaze. That way you guys can be happy. You can think of all, think of all the different color possibilities in the world. You can mix up the junk monkey paints to create your own. And that's what's really cool, especially if you're somebody who loves to do one of a kind looks. The fact that you can tint your glaze any color you want to, you can come out with a custom look that only you will know the recipe to, right? Whatever you put into your glaze. So that's always fun. So this is what it looks like. It's clear, you pour some out, and then I always use a uh, four to one ratio. So that means it's like if you were to think in your mind four teaspoons of glaze to one teaspoon of the junk monkey paint. Four to one because you never want your glaze to have too much of the paint added into it because otherwise it's not going to flow and you know like go over the top of your um, paint the way you want it to it's going to grab too quickly so to keep it nice and fluid and act, acting the way it should do a four to one ratio so i am so excited guys yay so who likes the ghost can handle it hopefully it's not too spooky fun 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 so we are starting the packing of all the orders today that are in the system thank you to everybody out there who supported us and got in on the list for these new products we're happy to be able to make them for you honestly it is a joy to be able to do what i do and to inspire other people and to um, work on bringing products into the world that otherwise unless we did it would never exist right that we're all able to play with all right what's this one this one says sugar plum and you guys always give us the best ideas uh for like our next upcoming colors you guys know we just listen to you and so you've been saying that you would love to have a plum color um and so guess what we did what you said we made a plum color oh Morgan, let's, let's pop these open as well right that's always fun to see the color out of the can so yeah you guys said you wanted a plum color so Let's see what plum. Now the clear glaze is just gonna look like a lick clear, not a clear, it dries clear. A, it's gonna look like a white, um, what do you call it? A white, say it with me, Sonia. Focus on two things at the same time. I'm opening up my can below me. Oh, it's so pretty, look at that. Look at that. All right, plum, can you see in here? Can you see in here? Let's go ahead and paint something real quick with this. Um, but yeah, and also I'll open a glaze as well. So the glaze is just a, it's gonna look like milky, and then you mix your coloring with it, and then it sets up and just gives you a clear glaze. There we go, that's what it looks like on the inside. And then you just mix your color into that, and it becomes the color that you mix into it, and then it sets up when you put it on top of your peanut surface. Surface. All right, so let's let me grab something. This is just a wooden plaque that I have here. You can see in the background, I've been up to my shabby paintings again. And uh, this is a wooden plaque. If you go to Walmart, they have a really cool unfinished wood section. And these are awesome for painting on. They're also great for shipping to you guys on because I don't have to worry about anything breaking on them. So I've got a few of these plaques I was gonna try painting some shabby flowers on and adding to my website eventually. But yeah, this is a plum color right here. Let me set it up. Let's see here. Actually, this is not gonna work. Let me get a different brush. Let me get a different brush. That one still had a little something something on it. All right, so here we go. Ooh, yeah. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. So nice. The name's so nice, you gotta say it twice. Sugar plum. Oh my gosh. So pretty. I'm trying to pull it back here because up close the light is really super on it. So you can really see it back here a little bit more. It's a little bit better, the color that's in it. What do you guys think? Yes, yes. All right, and then we'll let that dry as well. All right, brush here. I didn't do what I always tell you guys to do, that when you open a new brush, like out of here, Anytime you open a new brush before you use it, just take a moment to do like a tug and pull on the end. And then any little hairs that didn't get clipped down tightly in the uh, process of making it, let them fall out before you paint with them. So I always try to do that, but I just got too excited. Okay, so this is the sugar plum. And then make space 
because we have another new color in town. Ooh, get my workout today. All right. This color is called gingerbread. All right, gingerbread, gingerbread. Look at the gingerbread cookies. Love it. All right, let's open the gingerbread. Definitely get yourself a paint key. It's gonna be a lot easier um, to open up. I've also used, used scissors. I've also used um, flat knife, butter knives, which I'm pretty sure I can hear my grandmother in my ear because she would get so mad when I was younger and I would open up um, a can of paint with her butter knives. <laughs> she would be like, you're running all my butter knives. They're all, you know, all the tips of them. <laughs> so here's what I'm saying. If you open up a new brush, take the time to just do that because look, see that? If I didn't do that and just went right into my paint, they're gonna come. And that's just the fact of life. That's life. That's just the manufacturing process that when they do the clamp down, any new brushes, always just give it a little, you know, brush through with your hand. It'll save you some pain when the brush hairs come out. Oh my gosh, this is just gorgeous. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, she is beautiful. All right, let's put it on here with our plum. Oh my gosh, guys. So exciting. We used to have a color in the past that we called ginger spice. We changed up the recipe a little bit when we brought it out of retirement. Sometimes we do that. We put colors into retirement. Uh, we make space for new colors. We're always changing it up, right? We like to keep it fresh and new and exciting and listen to you guys and see what you guys want to paint with. So we brought this one out of the vault. The recipe has changed just a little bit. So if you if you have ginger spice, which amazes me because some of you guys out there are still painting with the stuff in mason jars that we made like, you know, back in 2014 and 15. So if you have an old color, or if, if you love that color, I should say, then you'll be happy to know that this color is in the house. It's almost like a, um, uh, it is like a ginger spice. We call this one gingerbread. It is like a rusty orange, more of a muted orange. Pumpkinator is in your face, like splat pumpkin, right? Like really, really vivid orange. But this one is definitely more the rusted, like the rusty root. Yeah. You know, how would you guys describe it? So these will dry, of course, and set up. And I'm going to have to take a picture of this. That's a good view right there. You guys can really see it. Love it. All right, she's excited. Who got in on the pre-order? Well, your patience has paid off because you know what? You're front of the line and uh, we'll be getting all your orders out. So I'm about to go and do some packing and shipping and you guys watch for your tracking numbers. Whatever email you use when you check out is the email that you'll get a tracking number to that says, hey, um, your order has shipped or we're working on your order right now. So we're gonna work, in, work on them in the order in which they arrive. All right, so I am loving this. I think this is this is going to be a lot of fun. I should probably do a live this week once I get through everybody's packing and shipping because that's the priority. And maybe we'll play a little bit because I've got some furniture in the garage that I need to get done. So um, this might be a good excuse to play. All right, I hope you guys have a great evening. Um, maybe get into some book reading. Maybe get into some painting, you know, some good munchies, some good TV watching. Hope you guys have a terrific evening. Go bananas. Always doing something that you love. And I'll see you guys, guys again tomorrow. Bye.